Poland will buy hundreds of US-made GM-158 JASSM air-to-surface cruise missiles with a range of 1,000 km for its F-16 fighters in yet another effort to bolster its armed forces since Russia's invasion of neighboring Ukraine. Defense Minister Vladislav Kosiniak Kamish announced the signing of relevant agreement with the US on Tuesday. Today is the signing of a $735 million contract for the purchase of JSSMR air-to-surface missiles, which will be in service with the Polish Armed Forces, Kosiniak Kamish said at the contract signing ceremony, according to TVP Info Television. The long-range missiles will be supplied to Poland from 2026 to 2030. Poland signed a $735 million contract to acquire AGM-158B-2, AIM-120C-8 and AIM-9X missiles and related equipment when Polish President Andrzej Duda and Prime Minister Donald Tusk visited the U.S. on March 12. The deal was approved by the U.S. Congress in late March. Poland sent the order for the purchase of AGM-158B-2 JSSM cruise missiles to Washington for Polish Air Force's F-16 fighters in May 2023. It should be noted that Poland is spending around 4% of its gross domestic product on defense this year and last week announced an agreement with the US for the delivery of a $960 million airspace reconnaissance system to monitor the northeastern borders. NATO is practicing nuclear strikes on Russia, the FSB reported. NATO is practicing nuclear strikes on Russian territory near the border. Army General Vladimir Kulishov, first deputy director and head of the FSB Border Service of Russia, said in an interview with Ria Novosti on the occasion of Border Guard Day. Near the Russian border, NATO's reconnaissance activity is increasing. The intensity of operational combat training of the alliance's troops is increasing, during which scenarios for conducting combat operations against the Russian Federation are being worked out, including launching nuclear strikes on our territory, he said. As the agency's interlocutor noted, this situation requires taking adequate measures to protect and guard borders. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that Ukraine has the right to, among other things, attack military targets on Russian territory. He added that some allies have already lifted the corresponding restrictions on strikes and, in the opinion of the Secretary General of the North Atlantic Alliance, the time has come to lift other restrictions. Press Secretary of the Russian President Dmitry Peskov, in a conversation with Izvesha, noted that NATO is flirting with military rhetoric, increasing the degree of escalation and falling into military ecstasy. In turn, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, commenting on Stoltenberg's statements, indicated that he had exceeded his authority. He noted that the Secretary General of the Alliance has already been besieged by NATO members themselves. Recently, some NATO countries are increasingly talking about direct intervention in the Ukrainian conflict. Thus, French President Emmanuel Macron has repeatedly stated this. According to him, Paris does not exclude the possibility of sending troops to Ukraine if Russia breaks through the front line and Kyiv asks for help. He also claimed that many countries agreed with his approach about possibly sending in the military. The German magazine Der Spiegel reported that the Baltic countries and Poland were warning Germany that they could send troops to Ukraine if the situation develops unfavorably for Kiev. The Kremlin calls such ideas an unprecedented round of escalation of tension that requires special attention and measures. Against the backdrop of bellicose statements by Western politicians, exercises of missile formations of the southern military district began in Russia on behalf of Vladimir Putin. These maneuvers practice the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons. Summer could be catastrophic for Ukraine. The New Yorker explained why. The Russian army is advancing into Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, as summer approaches, a move that underscores how the two-year conflict has swung in Vladimir Putin's favor. At a minimum, this could force Ukraine to redirect its overstretched forces away from the Donbass, where Russia is waging a long-term offensive operation. This is stated in an interview with Dara Masikot, a senior fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, 
For the New Yorker, the trend is bad for Ukrainian forces, and I think the situation will get worse before it gets better. The Russians are clearly giving priority to Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. They are putting a lot of effort on the ground with heavy use of glider bombs. This is very stressful for Ukrainian units there. The Ukrainians also have to divert units to strengthen them in the Kharkov area. So, although weapons are supplied to Ukraine under an additional bill, they do not arrive immediately and personnel issues remain unresolved in these units, the expert notes. According to her, Russia does not yet have enough strength to try to repeat the 2022 offensive. The Russians do not have the manpower or skills to attempt to occupy a city of this size. One in the Kharkov direction of the Russian Federation wants to break through and create what they call a sanitary zone. The worst case scenario for Kharkov is that the Russian Federation tries to devastate it by bombing it with missile strikes. At the same time, there is personnel issue in Ukraine. Some units are staffed at 30 to 40 percent. And when staffing levels are that low, it's very difficult to accomplish your mission. Reducing the conscription age from 27 to 25 does not bring in the required number of people. The expert adds that at the same time, Russia has a limited level of armored vehicles, in particular armored vehicles. They are not replenishing the equipment they brought into the war at the same pace. Consequently, they will burn through the functioning portion of their reserves within the next two years if they continue at this rate. If they burn through their strategic reserves, they'll have to consider putting the whole thing on pause until they can ramp up their new production quickly. However, to put Russia in this position, the level of losses must remain what it is today, which means that yes, Ukraine must continue to receive the additional assistance that it is receiving now.